you got to yeah. kick down the door sideways like Steve did, where you got Neil Adams <laughs> to do, you know, uh, sewing you machine. You got to start a sewing machine happens. company. Yeah. Exactly. Whatever, you know? whatever like, it took. That's so, so clever. We, we got to gotta bring that. We gotta bring Singer back into mainstream. And then, yeah, and then, right. <laughs> we gotta bring Singer back to comics. Right, yeah. just bring your bullpen <laughs> back together. I'll, I'll tell you another interesting story Please. that fits in here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you know, growing up, I was reading every comic book I could get my hands on, and one I really, really loved was Metal Men. Oh yeah, oh, I love Metal yeah. Men. Yeah. Now, right. Metal Men was created and written by Robert Kaniger, and the cr characters were created by Ross Andrew. Okay. Of the yep. famous team of Andrew and Esposito, Mike Esposito being the anchor. And yep. I love that book. I love the look of it, right? I love the feel of it. Ross Andrew's art was distinct from everybody else's. So we're getting ready to do the deal with uh, the Archie company, okay? Yep. And I get a phone call from the president of the company. He says, Steve, uh, would you like to have Ross Andrew be the artist on the Zen books? And I say, what? Holy shit! You gotta wow. be kidding! You gotta be kidding me! He says, no. Ross loves aliens. He loves Zen, and he's requested that he be the artist on the Zen books. I said, I cannot believe this. Wow. So we re I arranged to meet. Ross and Mike at a diner on Long Island, right? Oh my God. And I go there and I'm sitting across from them and I'm shaking and sweating and everything because I'm I'm sitting across from I my idols, right? Mm -hmm. And they're about to work on my book. That's yeah. I can't I can't even express yeah. to you what that feeling was. Yeah. Um and it turned out that Ross and I became very good friends. Mm -hmm. I was the last person to talk to him before he passed away. Uh, I spoke uh, at his funeral. But to have, so think about this. Say, you know, I'm sure there's a few artists, they come to your mind that, you know, they're just like your idols, right? Yeah. To have them want to work on your book. Yeah, I can't even fathom it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, well, again, these are things that happen in life. You just don't know where where they're going to come out of the blue from, you know. But it was an amazing thing. And we had like a six issue run, which was basically what was intended uh, with the Archie books. And I worked on all of them with uh, uh, Ross and, and Mike. Oh does, does Zen have a uh, alter ego or is he Zen full time? No, he's just Zen. Okay. No, du no duality here. Okay, all right. Wasn't sure. <laughs> I yeah. Oh wow, that is, that's so cool. I didn't knew Ross Andrew worked on the book. That's really awesome. Yeah, yeah I was a big yeah. Metal Men fan too. I I love that book. I love those characters. You know. Oh yeah, they were very cool. underused in the DC universe too. Right, but they keep coming back though. They're, they're back again. I just saw they're, they're you know. But again, not everybody can be overused. As yeah, right. As I right. Like the, the what's the big dumb one? Was that tin? Tin. Gold, I think. Oh, was it gold? It was yeah, gold, right. right? Wasn't he like there was? Uh, there was Mercury. gold. They all had like <clears throat> yeah, they all had weird names. Like we were based off of like elements or something. Element, but, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Tin I think was the big dumb one. I liked him the best. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm wrong, audience, you can point out which which yeah, one. I might think be platinum was too. I don't know. Guy. Platinum was the beautiful girl, right? Yeah, she was, and she was in love with Doctor Magnus. Magnus, and, yeah. right? Magnus. <laughs> it was great. That, that, they're supposed characters. to be making like a cartoon or something of that soon. Like I, I heard. Oh, really? That'd be cool. Yeah. I know I'm they sure showed up in. A, yeah. They showed up in the Batman Brave and the Bold cartoon for a couple episodes, and that was oh, cool yeah. to see. Yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, no, that's that's a great story, Steve. Did yeah, you work? Really did cool. you end up working out working with any of your uh, other idols on Zen at all? Or well, uh, uh, well, okay. I mean, we know you we know, got the, Bill here. Bill's like, well, of course, know. and Bill, Bill's a special case because Bill I'm is special. right brain, left brain. <laughs> Bill is one of the few artists who I also entrusted to write several Zen stories. Oh, look but at Bill's that. Bill's a very modest, yeah. uh, unassuming guy. One but of the Bill, only guys. Bill does it all. Bill does it all, and you awesome. know, in, in his nearest <laughs> series, he writes it as well as illustrates it, and it's good writing. I mean, Bill, uh, Bill does yeah, it all. Thanks, and Steve. Thanks, Steve. You know, when when uh, when Steve when we started publishing under Entity Comics, 
yeah. uh, Steve and Dan allowed me to redesign the character from the Archie look because it was really geared for kids. Okay. It was really, you know, it's, it's just his body proportions and the way he was presented. And, and, and what I used as an influence more than anything else uh, when I was redesigning the character was Dan's original character. Dan's original kind of like grungy, hardcore, uh. kind of like action you know, because those those are the kind of black and white books that I was buying at the time. You know, it's like yeah. I wasn't I, I never bought like the uh, the kid friendly turtle books. It was always like those grungy black and yeah. white ones where Shredder was actually murdering people. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, the ones and, I like too. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he wasn't necessarily they weren't necessarily going up against uh, a bunch of creatures that were more uh, more out of uh, more out of this world than the turtles were themselves. They were really just fighting like the hand most of the time. You know, they were fighting right. the ninjas. Right. They were fighting Shredder, and it was like an inner city kind of adventure. You know, the whole thing with April and Casey and that sort of stuff. Um, but a lot of the books I bought back then were all black and white books. So the fact that hey Steve, the fact that you actually published it in black and white first uh, is, is like that was in tune with everything that was actually hot back then, you know, so yeah. that was, yeah. it was actually perfect that you published it in black and white. Right. And again, that decision was made strictly because of the cost. Oh, so again, so it's just, again, one happy of exit. Yeah. Things. Yeah. <laughs> like you it's said, still the case for this better day. though in black and white, you know what I mean? You just mm -hmm. like, you color it and it's like, nah, it was better the other way. It's still know? the case to this day though. Yeah. You know, like black and white still cheaper. And mm -hmm. in, like you said, Johnny, in some cases better. The, um, yeah. I remember too, like I was picking up, starting to pick up like indie books at the time, along with all my Marvel stuff, because there was so much of it happening there. I remember picking up like X Mutant, and um, mm -hmm. there was uh, what was that? There was a book about Dracula that I really liked, and it was like um, mm. I forget who published it. It was like three Dracula stories in the book. One so was like Dracula books. Yeah, this one yeah. was good though. It was like. It was like a Dracula in the future, Dracula in the present, and Dracula, Dracula in the past. Those were the three different stories. Mm -hmm. I just remember it was oh, great. I mm -hmm. don't remember what that one was called. I'll have to research it. But I remember picking up a lot of stuff like that. X-Mutant. Um, yeah. I'm blanking on some of the titles now. But there was a ton of the Turtles, you know. Uh, Tick. Tick was another one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember the buying the I had to have each 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 issue of the tick i was like that was a required reading <laughs> yeah it was the first time i seen a die cut cover like that where remember the mm -hmm. was it the second issue that had the the the, the square cut out where it was yeah. just like yeah. oh yeah that's Do right remember that? that's right yeah, yeah, yeah it was like wild and that happened up in our neck of the woods that book that, along yeah, with turtles actually you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah northampton you know yeah. uh you would ask me just a couple of minutes ago about did I work with any other like idols? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I don't know if the right term would be idols, but uh, just uh, want to see if you guys know. Do you know that uh, Mike Mignola did a Zen cover? No, I didn't oh, know that. That's, yes. I know that. Oh, yeah. That's you can see that book on one. eBay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And wow. did you know that Sam Keith did a cover? Oh, I, I knew I, that I one. Love I love the Max. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, Very and, cool. And, and of course, the, one of the most popular books we ever did was the Jay Lee Chromium cover book. Jay that Lee, Entity wow! Covered. Yeah, that must have been right when his when he was starting in the industry. Start right? now, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So those books are hard to come by, and uh, so there's a lot of Zen stuff that has become you know quite collectible. Yeah, yeah that sure. is so freaking. Cool.